Welcome to GrayPrimer.com. My name is Nick. I'm your host and this is day four of four of our Warhammer special. And we're going to end on a high note, I think, with four war bands from Warcry. What I like most about these types of games is just how accessible they are. Much like um, Kill Team is for 40k, you know, Warcry is for Age of Sigmar. Today we're going to be unboxing Splinter Fang, Iron Golem, The Unmade, and Cypher Lords. Looking at the back, some of them do look a little fragile, very delicate and spindly, you would say. But the actual quality of the sculpts looks fantastic, and I think that's what's going to... Um, keep me going throughout the, the building process but let's just get in here see what this looks like close up and let's get them built as well back in a sec let's get these out of the way have a look at this so these are the cypher lords and the images are pretty good uh, nicely painted minis in the front, a bit of out-of-focus blurring in the background there, some, uh, well, I guess they look like sort of sparkly rocks, is supposed to represent embers or something. Iconic box art as well, isn't it? You know, it's just this big red banner is very cool, and each of the images up here in the top right are unique to the, the warband. You can see it here with the unmade. They have their own as well. Is he taking the skin off his face? Mm. But we'll get to that. That's pretty impressive as well. Nice tattoo or brand or something on the head there. And on the back we have just sort of, it breaks down into the, I guess, different types. Mirror blades there. Some nice images of details as well. And... Some chaotic iconography there too. The aim pointed star. Mindbound. Mirror Blade. Thrallmaster. Luminate. Yeah, the more I look at them here, the better they're kind of getting to me. Nice little detail there on the top. Always a fan. Have a little uh, hidden extra bit of box art. Oh, and these come in trays. Didn't know that. So nothing more in the box. Yeah, a nice little tray there. That's it's nice. It's always handy to have a tray actually when you're when you're building out the models. It's always good to have that it kind of like a little workspace. It keeps everything together as well. And then we have our instruction manual. Oh, so three different base sizes. Okay, cool. 25, 28, and 32. A nice uh, color instruction manual, building guide. And then it looks like alternate sort of uh, building instructions here for what you want to do. So the likes of the mind bound or the mind bound with double bladed sword, mirror blade with glaive, or mirror blade with dueling swords. Um, and that's pretty cool. Uh, so well worth checking how you want to build these before you start to build these, uh, depending on how you want your work try to look. So these are the Ah, uh, yes, three different sizes, 25, 28, and 32. We'll just pop the minis out of the way for a second. So, multilingual card pack. And finally, this little pack of the different unit cards. Let's have a look at these sprues. Good, sturdy looking weapons. Uh, looks fairly straightforward to put together. Oh, I do not like sort of hands that are like this. They're always a little bit fragile putting them onto the end of an arm without a peg or anything on it or a key or whatever it's called. Um, the scale of some of these does look quite small. They're quite small characters. And they don't look 
the, you know, some of, some of the sort of Warcry ones in the front look quite delicate, but these ones don't look particularly delicate. They look fine, you know, when clipping off, oops, get some focus back here. When clipping off uh, items like this from a sprue, I generally always try to find where the weakest part of it is. So I make my first cut here, my first clip here, and then my, my second clip here. What tends to happen if you clip over here is that this could snap at this point um, and you end up having to repair. Uh, you see it in, let me see if we can find any other examples. So yeah, here as well. So you wouldn't want to be starting down here somewhere. You'd want to start with the most fragile, then go to the next most fragile, and then either of these would be fine. If you were to clip, say, here and here, uh, you're putting an awful lot of load on these two uh, skinny connections, and you could end up just sort of snapping the sprue, uh, snapping the actual piece. Same up here as well. So starting at the foot or at the back here, you're putting a huge amount of load, not up here, but right here. And that could end up just snapping at that point. I mean, I still uh, I still make mistakes with these. I'm not going to be perfect or nothing, but I've sort of learned from previous mistakes to just have a quick look around all of the connectors before I make my first clipping. And with this one, this one's gonna, gonna be close between here and here. I'd say here's probably our safest bet, but I'd probably put a lot of support with my hand here and then make my cut. And then make my second one here and then go down to the, the back here and the foot because um, they're, they're going to be safe. But yeah, it's one of those kind of things that you sort of, you instinctively just go, you, you find whatever one you see first and go and, and clip that one off. But sometimes that can leave you with a, a damaged um, component. But yeah, so that's Cypher Alerts out of the way. Unmade splintered fang. So let's go with splintered fang. We've got true blood, pure blood. Oh, no, that's cool. Serpent collar, <laughs> serpents, venom blood. Another venom blood. Oh, with a in sort of running pose there. And then some clear bloods. That green works really well too. You'd sort of think it might be gaudy, but they've done really well here. It's it just works against that um sort of dark blue black um armor. Who's up in the corner? Ah oh, I bet you're a a laugh a minute. Right, what do they got in their little tab? Of course they have serpents. That's cool. And another tray. Splintered Fang. Oh, I can't wait to get that snake one built. And again, we've got three different sizes of bases, color instructions. And for anyone new to building minis like this, they are color where it's relevant. So if you see the model all in sort of grayscale like this, you know, that that's just sort of representing, hey, this is what it looks like when it's finished. But mid build, so it's showing you here between 15 and 16, the yellowed out bit is where it connects. So most likely where you need to put a little bit of glue. And you can see here again, the yellow helmet going on to the, the neck there. And then the connection point between the arm, uh, the forearm and the upper arm. So really clever the way they, they show these, um, show the, the way to put these minis together. And again, we've got multiple options for the different types of weapons. We've got Venom Blood with Spear and Shield, Venom Blood with uh, Barbed Whip. Wow. And again, Venom Blood with Blade and Barbed Whip or Venom Blood with Dueling Blades. Cool. Looking forward to putting those together. They're very gladiatorial. You know, the, the net there and the armor and the helmets. 
The plumes on the helmets as well. Yeah. The snake charmer? Not so gladiatorial, but... Hey. It's a fantasy universe. The cross daggers, small swords are very neat there. Uh, lovely detail. Ooh. That's cracker. And there's that uh, brand again, the, the logo. And these lovely nets. Ah, oh, detail on the face there as well. It's, it's stellar. Got to look at those, those barbed whips right over there. Oh, wow, that looks so fragile. So again, I'd probably be supporting, supporting here somewhere. Make a, make my first clip there. And with these very skinny pieces, you don't want to be clipping too close to them. Um, because you may still need to shave that down a little bit to flatten it off. You may need to file it a little bit. So I'd say with a, a piece like this, you know, cut further back up here into the peg. Um, and then once you have it sort of under control, like when it's on the sprue like this, it's hard to get full control of it. But when it's separated from the sprue, even if it has some of these pegs sort of um, sticking out from it, because you're just dealing with that, you're not trying to hold the sprue as well. Uh, you have much more control to get it filed down. But the snake detail is, is pretty neat. And here's just the rest of the sprue. I think that's mostly upside down. Like, look at the detail in that, uh, the clothing, muscle tone. Little, little scratches on the armor there as well. The, the, these fine details, the, oh, this is the, the pile of snakes for the top of that base. I'm sure they have a purpose in the, in the warband. And we have similar, the, again, the multilingual card there and the, the actual um, unit cards with, again, uh, images of the painted miniatures. Okay, so let's quickly go on to the next one. Ooh, now it's Sophie's choice here. I think Iron Golems. Oh, it's a heavier box actually than the other two. And we've got this little logo here as well. Oh, I'll quickly show the art on the front. Ah, oh, wow. What weight must be in these weapons? Very cool. Let's see who's our poster boy, our girl. Cool earrings. Don't wear hoops as big as that in combat, folks. You are likely to get your ears pulled off. Digging these trays. Uh, let's have a quick look at the book. Uh, 40 mil base in this one, okay. And again, same sort of color system, showing you where to, to glue. We've got Drill Masters, Dominars, Ugor Breachers, Armator, uh, Signifier Prefector, uh, Iron Legionary with Bolas, Iron Legionary with Twin Hammers. Oh, that looks so fragile. <laughs> I, I don't think of it in terms of how awesome it is as a weapon. I just sort of have that pre-fear of how fragile that's going to be when I try to build it. Here we are. Nice muscle tone. Heavy looking weapons. Whew. Ooh. Great armor. You can really see the detail in, in how the armor is put together, how it's actually constructed, rather than just some sort of, you know, random chain mail sort of look to it. You can see the, the sections of the armor, the, the segments of it. Oh, careful where to pick that one up. Oh my word. That is... <sighs> hmm. Where to make the first cut. I imagine here, 
but I'd want to support the whole thing. I'd never be tempted to cut over here or somewhere or anything like that to try and release, you know, the section. Uh, it'll just end up snapping something in here. It'll still put tension across the component. Oh my. That is wonderful. It's almost got like a sporin sort of look there as well. Like a chainmail kilt and a sporin. Heavy duty weapons here. Heavy duty people. Yeah. Seriously armored. Uh, range of bases. And then again, we have our unit cards. And nice clear icons there as well. So, real straightforward. Looking forward to building those. Well, you know, balanced between looking forward to and a little bit scared to, but... And then we have finally the one that I have loved since I saw it uh, previewed on um, Warhammer Community. Uh, just, just look at this team. It's like we don't need our faces on our heads, we're just going to put them on our belts. That is really committing to your warband. That is going all the way in support of your team. Um, poster boy we've seen already. So what do we got here? We got the blissful one, the ascended ones, uh, joyous one, <laughs> joyous. And then the ones at the bottom are called the awakened ones. Okay. And there's our little icon on this. Oh, the top of this was folded under rather than out. Oh, I've never seen that before. Anyway, nice little chaotic symbol there with a uh, someone's removed face on it. I wonder is it a massive faux pas to wear someone else's armor that's got their face on it? You know, if you accidentally sort of just reach for like the belt or something off the rack, and you like put it on. That's only when you look down, you're like, oh, that's Steve, that's not me. Oh, well, a big size difference there as well. That'd be interesting to see once they're built, how different they actually are. Whew. Yep, and ranging from all four bases here, 25, 28, 32, and 40. Same again with uh, the color coding system. Awakened one with flail, awakened one with uh, brutal pole arm, and then a sanded one. Not as many, uh, oh, jo joyous one and blissful one, I didn't see that. So it doesn't look like there's as any variance there, really, uh, for build this way or build that way, uh, as we've seen in the other three kits there. Then we have our bases. Where's the 40? Oh, here it is. The 40 is loose in the box and again we've got cards and the multilingual card let's have a quick look at the sprue okay it's pretty spiky I speak from experience Ugh, that looks like it's gonna snap I mean, the beauty of, of uh, plastic cement is that, like, even if it did snap, like, right there, at the, the you know, the weakest point, or, or over here, actually, um, even if it does, you can use plastic cement precisely to form that sort of, you know, because plastic cement melts the two pieces of plastic together, it, and then when it, when it sort of has stopped reacting, it is just like one complete piece of plastic. You have merged the two pieces of plastic into one. So with that in mind, like, you know, even if you did snap a chain like that or something midway, um, it is possible to recover it. You just have to be tender. Speaking of tender, trying to get this out without damaging it. There we go. Because there's so many fragile pieces in this. You know, I think back to when I was like 15 or 16 in building these, and I don't think I would have had the patience or the finesse 
to clip these. I'm sure there are plenty of 15 and 16 year olds who would work their way through this, no bother at all. But I would not have been in their number at that age. I would have had to repair quite a lot of this. This in particular, if you can see that there, I mean, that is, it's kind of a miracle it survived this long in that box because that is just so fragile. And here's another piece here. It's testament to Warhammer's production standards, the quality of their design, their computer aid design, their, their molding systems, that they can produce something like this as incredibly fragile as this, that they're able to package it without being damaged. I'm sure it's not always the case. I'm sure they're um, times when the stuff does get damaged in transit or whatever, or in, in packing. But it's not something I've ever experienced. And I think it's just remarkable when you look at just how flimsy they are, that you're not just sort of pouring out a, a box full of pieces, you know, uh, broken pieces. As delicate as they look, as fragile as they may be, and as much heartbreak as I have in ahead of me as I try to put these together. I'm still excited to put them together, but let's have a look and I will be back shortly with four war bands all built up and ready to rock. And we're back. This is our very last recap of our four day Warhammer special. Uh, we are going to quickly go through these four Warcry war bands uh, and just sort of see what they, what they look like all fully built up and primed. The thing I expected to say at the end of this process, actually from seeing these way back on Warhammer Community, the first time they were previewed, the thing I expected to say at this point was like, yeah, they snapped when I was cutting them off the sprue. They were really hard to put together, blah, 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 blah. None of that happened. None of that is true. None of them snapped. They're surprisingly tough, resilient when being clipped together and it was a really pleasant building experience completely the opposite of what i thought it was going to be i thought these were going to be such a pain i thought they were going to be so spindly and easy to snap but no they were fun and it kind of bugged me because i put off buying them for so long because i thought they were going to be a pain but they weren't they were great okay so we got four of these to get through we got the iron golem the unmade cypher lords and splintered fine start with splintered fine because it is dead center we're going to start with the weakest of all of the miniatures from all of these four boxes it's really weird to even have this in the the ranking and the count but here it is some snakes, one of them quite hairy, for whatever reason, uh, on a base. Snakes on a base. But let's get into the more uh, memorable miniatures, let's just say. Uh, this is uh, one of the, the smaller characters, this is on a 25 mil base. And um, what I noticed about these Warcry miniatures across these four boxes is they all seem to have sort of a, an optimal viewing angle. Like, for example, this one. It's sort of here, looking straight down, straight down the lens there. You can see just the, the edge of the sword coming out at the back. And uh, yeah, I think it's probably because maybe maybe the concept drawing of this started here and then they built the rest of the miniature around it. But they all seem to have that optimal viewing position, the sort of most dynamic um, angle to look at them. Anyway, uh, lovely details. I love that nick in the sword as well, that sort of damage, um, damage in the, the leg armor there as well. And some really cool details. Uh, let's fly through the rest of these. And what's lovely is there are no doubles. Uh, all individual poses. And just so many lovely details to pick out when you're painting this. Uh, there's a lot going on here. And it's kind of cool to see like the, the mouth and nose and stuff and chin underneath that helmet. Next. Another one of those lovely cinematic poses coming right at camera there. Um, but again, 
really some fantastic little elements there that you'd be able to pick out when painting. And minimal contact with the base, some of these, but you know, plastic cement, you know, creates a, a really nice bond and I've never really had a problem with that. Now look at this guy, just he's got the sword just resting in that little gap in the shield there. You can just hopefully you can see that between that spike and the edge. And you'd be able to you'd be able to do the same thing in that gap. But it's just it's just lovely. It's a lovely pose. You know, it'd be nice to photograph just just snap right there as he's just glancing over the top of the shield. Um lovely. Lovely stuff. A uh, really dynamic pose here as well with the twin swords and uh, he's giving it the, the full beans there screaming. Ah, lovely images as well here we're getting. You know, I'm not doing anything, the miniature's doing all the work. I mean these are so dramatic and they're just grey, you know, they're just grey primed. Isn't that cool they'd be painted up? Oh, that's so neat. Nice sort of lightweight shield there as well. Quite realistic. You can sort of imagine being able to carry that around with you all day. And um, he's at full stretch with that, with that weapon. I mean, just look at that. It just looks like a, such a cool image. Yeah, very, very cinematic sort of poses. Um, Getting progressively bigger here, just to give you an idea of... I'll just bring up that first one, not the snakes, but... You can see the difference in scale. Um, I'm not really sure why these last ones are... Why they're getting chunkier, but... Maybe there's something in the lore to explain why this is such a bigger dude. The bald head exposed at the back there, so you'd be able to get some really nice flesh tones contrasting against, you know, maybe a flamboyant, whoops, sorry, camera, maybe a flamboyant plume, the metal of the weapons, um, and then the flesh tones against that. So you have a lot of fun with contrasting your paint palette there. I'm getting into a couple of the larger ones here now to finish off this first warband. Um, you know, these are, these are clearly sort of a, a gladiatorial look to them. And here's a net and a trident um, with some pretty lethal looking predator. Spikes on the hand there too. And what looks like a prehensile tail with... That kind of looks like a, uh, like a scorpion sting on it. Hmm, I'd have to read more into that, but this one looks that little bit more lethal. I mean, none of those other ones look particularly friendly, but... This guy looks lethal. And then finally into the, um, the sort of the, the marquee figure, the showcase figure with the snakes coiled around him and this one flying out like a, like a weapon. Um, you know, with, and again, sort of the, the cinematic angle there, which is so cool. Even the headpiece as well, with what look like cross sort of spiny snakes or dragons or something. And you can also see the dart that's being held there just between finger and thumb. Just delicately sort of held, but you can tell that it's a, a pretty lethal throwing weapon. And I like that little touch. Uh, and there are additional darts, I think, hanging off. Yeah, so there's additional darts at the back there. And then like a sort of a spiky looking cobra on the ground with its coils all up. And again, like a cobra with a cobra with like a scorpion tail. My word. And this this longer one as well. So very much snake-like creatures, but with that alien element to them, like the spikes, the scorpion tail. It just gives it that little edge of of extra. Uh, so as a as a first war brand, war band, that is, uh, they're off to a great start. Really like that splintered fang set. Uh, let's have a look at this Cypher Lords. And I think this was the one that I was least interested in. Because to me, they, they look kind of... There's something zinchy about them. Something uh, flamboyant and bird-like or something. I don't know why they didn't appeal to me. But when I was building them, man, they're pretty cool. 
Look, look at the, the hand up. You know, that's so neat. And again, if I can just get the light to play right here, just pure cinema. Like, what a great pose. What absolute poise and menace. Big surprise. Big surprise liking these. And here's another one. The sword just resting on his upper arm there. A very sort of uh, practiced martial arts pose there. Great balance. Uh, great fighting stance. I mean, I don't know martial arts, but, but this looks like a great um, martial arts sort of stance. I really like that mini. Maybe the uh, the body sort of shape in this one isn't as cool as those last couple, but still pretty neat, you know, throwing star up and ready to rock. Another spare on the belt. And uh, yeah, I haven't even talked about these head pieces. Not sure how good they are in combat. Looks like something that'd be pretty easy to grab a hold of, uh, but maybe you don't want to get that close to something that's as lethal as this. Uh, here we go. Huge sword. A different type of headpiece with sort of ornaments hanging off it. That's all I can sort of say that they are like Christmas ornaments hanging off the the hooks there. Um, ooh, that throwing star looks like it's in a bad place. I'll cut the knee off you. The helmets and stuff are really neat. I do like it. Uh, and this is another, actually another double sword here. So, wow. I'd love to see these things sort of animated or something. Imagine how cool that would be watching that fight. Those swords whirling and the, the headdress sort of floating around and the Christmas ornaments jingling or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a wind chime. Who knows? Anyway, um, we'll move on. And more Christmas ornaments. Really cool um, stance as well. Oh, I like the way the um, the loincloth here is just kind of it's just kind of pooling on the ground there. That's a really interesting touch. I like that because because the character is sort of crouched a little bit. Oh, that's lovely. If you're doing that in sort of mud, you could uh, like if the the base of this was going to be muddy, you could have that you know represented on the loincloth as sort of splatter. I like that one very much. I like the, there's a flamboyance to these. There's a, you know, there's something ornamental about them. The costumes they wear, the headdresses, the, the tiny little touches, like even these little sort of um, accents hanging off the, the ribbons and stuff here. There's a, a vanity to it, which is kind of interesting. A flamboyance, you know, it's kind of like elf kind of looking. I'm not sure what the species is underneath these helmets, but definitely they've got, they've got sort of an elven arrogance. Oh man, these frisbees of death with a couple of spares on the belt as well. Again, these were uh, much like the throwing stars and the the knives on the splintered fang. This was an, an optional accessory. I, I figured it, it went well with this one because it already had a death frisbee. I, I like the pose. They are almost primed back like a baseball pitcher, except this is what they're throwing your way. And I love the coolness of having it just in these two fingers, just spinning in those before it flicks it off into your face. And now for the last one in the Cypher Lord set. And uh, let's see if this one is as impressive as the final splintered fang. Well, it's certainly flamboyant. Got a whole bunch of those Christmas decorations hanging off his noggin. Got some kind of a lethal fan. Multi-bladed fan there. Imagine that's hard to keep clean once it starts getting full of gore. Oh, cool fingernail detail, actually. I don't know if you can see that there. That's, that's a neat little touch. Um, and three of these head plume things. Little throwing star tucked away there. Or maybe that's more of an ornamental one. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool.
Not as spectacular as old Serpentor over there with his alien snakes. Let's get into... Oh, do we finish on the Unmade or the Iron Golem? Let's finish on Unmade. So let's have a look at the Iron Golem set. So these are the super armored, I guess, or armored, slow, and brutal. Whereas the probably the Cypher Lords, Splintered Fang. Well, maybe the Cypher Lords with that sort of light finesse. You know, like a finely balanced blade. Splintered Fang were the gladiatorial, highly skilled, multi-weapon uh, type of dudes. This... This is the the heavy hammer, armored enough to take a lot of blows and just kind of wear you down. I like the little. If that speaking of hammers, I think that's like a um, what would you call that? What are those charms? Is this like a hammer charm hanging off the the armor? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, the Shield itself looks like the backside of a UK penny. Now that I've said it, I've got to go and try and find one of those just to compare it. Uh, and then the spiked ball and chain uh, weapon there at the back, which has probably got a specific name, is uh, another one of these sort of optional stick-ons. Um, but yeah, Iron Golem, pretty cool. Nice start. Uh, similar shield on this one, but a different pose. And this guy's got a huge um hinged looking weapon kind of like like nunchucks but with a with no chain more like just a hinge in the middle um looks pretty dangerous <laughs> like, like that looks dangerous sure uh this one's got a few charms hanging off his belt looks like a throwing star type of one there hammer another one at uk pennies on him um and there's again something uh, deep sea fisherman kind of looking about these and it only gets more so as you go through the different ones uh, the standard bearer I love the the chainmail the the armor hanging off this the standard that's pretty cool again that sort of deep sea diver helmet pretty heavy looking hammer there a few embellishments these little charms hanging off the legs and stuff next we've got another one of these medieval nunchucks a huge chain with a spiked ball on the end of it i am sorry that would the training you would have to do to keep to be able to use that safely goodness me not just for your own safety but your compatriots around you a few little charms hanging off the legs there this guy surprised me when I was building it. It looks like a kind of a, a dwarf character um, fighting for the Iron Golem. Um, twin hammers. All the little charms and bits and pieces hanging off of him. Cool helmet. I like that um, embellishment on the top. I'm pretty neat looking. Um, instead of... It, it, like, is this beard armor? Is this what we can call this? I mean, it's the same sort of armor des uh, design as hangs off the standard. But I think in this case, it's protecting that Iron Golem Dwarf beard. <laughs> now we're talking serious kind of hammers here. Meat tenderizer on the side of it, or on the front of it there. And again, really cool armor details. I love that. I guess these guys must have had a lot of fun designing these up, designing up the different factions and embellishments and things which make them unique. So, what's more lethal than a single chain and ball weapon? A triple chain and ball weapon. You would not want to be standing within three feet of this guy. Probably more than three feet. And let's get into the behemoth. Wow. I love this miniature. Just for um, scale. Let's look at the first one we picked up and then this one. Yeah, he's a chunky fella. He's got these, uh, I guess his hands are inside these weapons. The Mark of Chaos here in the front of the helmet. 
Hmm. Nice. And some of those little uh, charms hanging off. UK penny on his belly. And I really like this. It's got a little bit of weight to it as well. Yeah, really love that mini. Okay. All right, Gollum done. Let's have a look at the unmade. So the unmade, as we discussed before, they cut off their own faces. They use it as a belt buckle. So that's a, that's a fairly significant life choice. I mean, you see the tongue and everything. You see the eyeballs just in there in the, <laughs> in the skull, in the eye sockets. Just look at the tongue. And in this particular, there, there's two options in this one. I think one is just like the normal helmeted face. And then with this one, he's actually lifting it up. So you can see the, the helmet, which is potentially another one. Somebody else's skull. It's got little teeth sort of for eyes there. Um, but this particular um, variation of this build, you can have him sort of peering out from underneath his, his, his skull mask. Just just crazy. Crazy. I love it, but it's crazy. Um, you can see skin tone and stuff there. There's a lot less armor on these. You got uh, what looks like a sort of leather stitch skirt, um, kind of a, uh, what do you, what would you call that? A cattle prod looking weapon. Um, and yeah, again, super cinematic. Look at that pose. That, I mean, that would be just a joy to paint. Absolute, absolute joy. Um, so let's go on to the next one. So you can see here that the helmet down, the sort of the skull mask over the front of their their actual face and uh, this sort of sickle weapon i don't think they have a hand in there i think that is actually grafted onto their arm bone i think the hand has been removed or cut off um, and then they have this spiky club details as well some embellishments here too that seems to be a, a constant across the different uh, war bands Got that little symbol there. Kind of look like a Gears of War gear, but also like a throwing star. And then what looked like kind of dumbbells hanging off, but I don't think so. I think that's some other weapon. Looks kind of like a saw, like a wire saw. Cool corona. This cool spike corona around the, the head. It gives it a, a really um, interesting kind of overall look. I do like that. Uh, no corona on this next one, but a bit more detail around the, the mask that they wear across their, over their skulls. And you can just about see the face in there on the belt. Uh, cool weapon. And again, sort of a stitched leather skirt. This one's in full run, barefooted. Looks like a shackle around the ankle there. Uh, weird looking weapon. I'm wondering if there's electrical charge or something in this. I don't see any sort of power supply to it. Or it could be some kind of mechanized trap. Maybe this closes in or something when it um, connects with the enemy. Not sure. It's not friendly. Lovely detail on the pads of the feet too. And again, these sort of... The original face skin is there. Face skin on the belt. How do I sleep at night, honestly? How do the sculptors of these sleep at night? Oh, wow, look at this. Is this a flail? Is that what you call that? Oh, that would just split you open. Again, got that kind of hinge like we saw on, I think, the Iron Golem, one of their weapons. But a snapshot of this, this character in, in full attack mode. Um, and I think, oops, sorry for headbutting the camera. I think this is another weapon that's grafted onto the arm rather than something that's being held. Yeah, because... <laughs> those are... <sighs> I didn't even realize this when I was building this, but I think that's his degloved hand and arm hanging off his old face skin. It's a... Uh... I think the other, so his other arm looks okay. This one's not okay. Uh, 
so I'm thinking one of these came from someone else. Great. That's just great. It is like it's awesome, but you know. <sighs> um, <laughs> another one of these degloved arms and hands. Yikes. Uh, and yes, another completely demolished arm here to turn it into this hooked, spiked weapon. Um, so th these people are people. <sighs> these creatures are making a, a complete decision here to devote their lives to this warband. This is 100% how they plan to live and die. Um, and that's... And the extreme body modification, you can sort of see the, through the holes and what were the eyes there. Uh, the extreme body modifications are a testament to that, that this is it. This is what I'm... I'm going to live the rest of my days fighting for the unmade and nothing else matters. Pretty serious looking, this like a Rambo knife, what they used to call those. A stitched um, skirt there. Uh, looks like a grappling hook kind of weapon on a pretty spiky lethal chain. And see what I mean? There's like flexibility in these. They're not brittle. They don't just snap. Um, and, you know, I, I probably wouldn't recommend you do that too, too often, but uh, it's, it's not that they're like so fragile and bitter, brittle that you can't touch them, that you can't game with them. They're designed to um, have a little bit of give. Uh, which which I really like, and that's what surprised me so much. Look at how cinematic this pose is. I just think this is so cool. It's just bouncing off whatever this piece of um, scenery is, just using that as the launch point. And I think both arms on this character are fused into these weapons, and yeah, two two saggy um, skin gloves. I don't know what you even call those hanging off the belt. And that is an ultimate commitment. You can see the teeth in the eyes there as well, kind of. Yeah. So like we saw with the first character, that's not their actual head. That is just a um, like a, a face mask, like a protector. Okay, so let's, we started off weak with a tiny 25 mil base covered in little snakes and we're going to finish incredibly strong here. And the last miniature we'll look at in this four day Warhammer special and this is the absolute showpiece in the Unmade. It is just a stunning miniature. The corona on the back of the head there. No face mask in this one. That is their actual skull. No, it's not. So there's a slit in the cowl here. That's, I guess, where they look out. Oh, that is cool. And it's a double corona. So we've got this one coming out of the back and then the one around the top of the skull. I don't know if that's their skull. No, it can't be their skull. It would just be a gooey mess underneath that. But this person is looking out from behind this slit in the cowl. I mean, sure, there's their their face skin is down here on their belt buckle. Just like normal. They've got their arms are fused into these two sickle weapons. Um, I don't see their arm skin hanging off here anywhere, but both of their lower legs and feet are gone. They're on these fantastic sprung um, stilts. That is super cool. And I've said it before, but can you imagine something like this animated? You imagine like an animated series of War Cry where they have like different battles each week? Because some of these would look so spectacular animated. And here we are, right at the very end of our four-day Warhammer Games Workshop Citadel Special. 
I was convinced it was going to be Blood Bowl or nothing. And I am very glad to be proved wrong. The kill teams didn't really rock my world. I mean, I loved building those orc weapons, uh, but the sort of uni pose did nothing for me. The Nurgle were cool in the details, but perhaps looking back at them, I, I maybe there, there isn't enough variety between the models to, to make them be, um, to stand out all that well for me. Uh, I mean, Blood Bowl is always good. I, I loved putting those teams together, the Noblars and the, the Ogres especially. And then, of course, there was the Aeronautic Imperialis, which was kind of a nostalgic kick for me. It felt like I was building airfix kits in the attic, you know, 10 years old. It had that vibe to it. Uh, I Design-wise, I think they could have gone a little bit further with the Orc stuff to really set it apart from the Imperial Navy uh, aircraft. There were several times where I had to, you know, check against the, the um, building instructions as to which aircraft I was looking at, uh, whether it was Imperial or Orc. So, I, and I think that should be a clear designation between those two. But anyway, the number one building experience over this whole weekend is Warcry. Uh, by and far, it's Warcry. These are so cool to put together. Sure, the, the design of the likes of the Iron Golem, Cypher Lords didn't really appeal to me at first, but when you make them, when you look at them up close and you see the the detail, the, the cinematic quality of the miniatures and their poses, the fact that they're all unique, the, there's no doubling up here, there's no repetitive build experience, all unique, all fun to put together, uh, and the more you sort of look at them, the more detail you see. I imagine that every single one of these would be an interesting painting experience. I think you'd get a, a you'd have a huge amount of fun deciding the the color scheme you want to go with, and how you're gonna you know put all those little details in all those embellishments. How you're gonna make those stand out? Uh, I I just think they're they're fantastic miniatures. It actually makes me want to go and buy the Warcry book and learn how to play, get the starter set, whatever I need to buy to give this a go. And I'm definitely going to go and get the other Warbands. I want to get them all. I th I think this is, if this is anything, if this represents even in a small way what the rest of them are like, I want everything from Warcry. Uh, by and far the standout of this weekend looking at Warhammer's range and um, yeah I'm really looking forward to seeing more of it close up and personal but that's it we're at the end it's been fun it's been exhausting it has been a lot of grey primer going into these um, but but this is it for, for our Warhammer weekend and if you liked what I did this weekend with these these four days worth of videos all based around Warhammer, I can definitely do something like this again in the future. They are prolific producers of, of miniatures and games and they seem to have something new and innovative coming out every couple of weeks. Fair play to them. Uh, if it's anywhere near the quality of, of this stuff here, uh, I say just keep the pedal to the metal, Warhammer. For now, though, uh, I'm going to call it. Please like and subscribe. And like I say, comment down below. Have a look at the merchandise store over on grayprimer.com. Uh, check the affiliate link down below. And next week, we're going to revisit Shield Wolf Miniatures. And we're going to have a look at their Orc Mountain Infantry. Uh, some of the shoutiest looking orcs I've ever seen in a miniature set, uh, but that will be coming up on Friday. So tune in then, and until then, thank you so much for sticking with me this long weekend, and uh, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye now.